Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. We're live on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Tom McManus, Alan Ruff, Alison McConnell, all here with me, and we're delighted you can join us. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button, and if you hit the bell, you'll get all the notifications of our unique video content, and there's lots of it coming up for you to enjoy. One-to-ones, dream teams. Uh, Charlie Adam is going to be picking his dream team, and there's a few other surprises along the way. And we've got a fabulous competition starting tomorrow on the program a chance for you and maybe your pal to join us when we're out on the road we've teamed up with uh, social recluse which is a retro shop in king street in glasgow so we're really looking forward to quite a few of us heading out there for a wee q a with a few specially invited guests and you and your pal could be on your way there on the 10th of february uh, we'll be at social recluse at night just enjoying yourselves, having a bit of banter, and you'll get a chance to win a few prizes as well. So, no surprise, the main focus of attention on the programme is the transfer window. Aaron Ramsey is the talk of the town at the moment because some people will be looking in disbelief and wondering how in hell did Rangers manage to pull off a transfer coup like that, Ruffy? Yeah, I think the Rangers uh, supporters will be over the moon uh, with that one. You know, it used to be Celtic would bring in a big... Janino or, or somebody like that in the last couple of days of the window, but uh, it remains to be seen, you know, if he's match fit, if he gets thrown right in there. But he's certainly a quality player, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. And uh, it just shows you that Rangers are going for bust, you know, with this league this year. You know, I don't see many signings coming in, but short term, uh, the target is uh, the end of May and, and that's all that seems to be important just now. Well that's all that matters, it's such a big kitty, I mean some people have suggested 30, I would suggest nearer 40 million when you think of the, the calibre of teams that are in the group stages and remember it, the leaders of the Scottish Premiership and the eventual winners would go straight in, barring of course some mad technicality. No, listen, I think that Ruffy's hit the nail on the head there. I think it's it's been more bust for Rangers this season. You know, that everything's in that basket to win that champ to get into that Champions League. You know, that forty million kitty at the end of it, it would be huge. It would give them a huge advantage over Celtic as well. So listen, Aaron Ramsey, you know, from what I've heard from from, from his agent Dave Baldwin is Rangers are paying next to nothing on that deal. And I don't know how that's came about. He said that the event has had a bit of a nightmare. So I think Ross Wilson and the board at Rangers and, you know, fair play to Aaron Ramsey for going to Rangers. I think he could have went to the English Premiership easily. He's, he's, he's decided to come for a different challenge to Glasgow. You know, he wants to test himself at Rangers, so I think that is a phenomenal signing for Rangers. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a magnificent signing. If it all goes through, Ali, uh, I know Burnley wanted him. He didn't want to go there. Wolves were interested. European clubs were maybe sniffing about one in particular. But the option is Rangers. Uh, and if all sources are to be believed, uh, you know, on the jet, heading to Ibrox, cross the T's, dot the I's. Uh, I think it might be a wee bit soon for the the old firm game, but he's, it won't be the it won't be an unusual situation of being a player who's thrown in at the deep end in a game like that. Yeah, I think it's a huge cue if it comes off. I think it will be seen as a, a huge, like, exciting signing. I think it will lift the club, it will lift the players on the back of a very disappointing weekend. It will maybe just inject a bit of belief, a bit of energy into the club again, a bit of energy into the squad ahead of Wednesday night's game. But uh, I, I think it's a... It's an, I have to say, I was very sceptical when I first heard this morning the link. I, I was a bit dubious about it just because of the finances involved. I think you know the the kind of figures that he was on, the, the salary that he was on. I think he was probably one of the highest played players in the, the Italian league, so I was very dubious when I first heard. As the day has gone on, it's gathered pace, it's gathered a bit of momentum and it, it looks very much as though it's it's just about dotting, t, dotting I's and crossing T's now and getting it over the line. But it's a kind of old school signing. It feels like some of those old January windows of old in the, the last day when you're bringing in a big name to, to, to bolster your your fight for the title. Yeah, I, I mean, the way this deal is constructed and what you've just said to us, which is obviously really interesting, Tam, uh, Rangers should go for Obama Yang now that that deal's off at Barcelona and just say, <laughs> look, we're not paying you anything. Arsenal will pay your wages. <laughs> we'll give you a game. It's, it's crazy. You know, you've got to give massive credit to Ross Wilson at Rangers. You know, they've got the boy Dial in from Man United as well, who'll be on, you know, mega money. You know, so they're going to these 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 guys and trying to do a deal. You know, offering them, you know, the opportunity to come and play for Rangers uh, and possibly play in the Champions League next season. That's got to be the carrot. So, you know, as I said, it, it's it's came from 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 Ramsey's agent that Rangers are not paying a lot of money in this deal. So, 
I think it's what a deal it is for, as Alison said, it gives Rangers a massive you know, boost. Yeah, absolutely, and they're obviously looking at uh, bringing in a right-back. Matthias Zukowski is cover for James Tavernier as well. He's at Lechia Gdansk at the moment, Ruffy. Um, and that would be not a bad transfer window for Rangers. Well, it's cover, isn't it? You know, that, uh, I mean, obviously they lost Parson. You know, you always need cover. It doesn't matter, you know, who's the, the, the first choice, you know. So that's obviously what they're doing there. And again, I think that's a reasonable one. You need some players for the future. There, there is life after May. Whether you get there or no, so you've got to you've got to bed in young players like that. Listen, if, you never know. There might be an eleventh hour deal for Suter as well. I mean, we'll hear from Robbie Nielsen a little later on, but you wouldn't bet against it. You know, being one of those deals that suddenly they they, they manage to get some kind of money together for that. Although the general feeling is you might just wait to the summer. Yeah, well, you would have thought. You know, I don't know the finances at heart. You know, we're talking about five hundred, six hundred. If you're going to you know, take the young boy for Poland. I think he's about four hundred thousand. You would have thought Suter would have been the, the the more interesting buy. You know, obviously what we're talking about may be the big thing that he could be an asset to them as well. Yeah, and going the other way, um, you're talking about. Uh, we're wondering whether Jamie McGrath was going to be going to Hibernian. It Doesn't look as if that deal's going to uh, materialise. Brandon Barker to possibly Hibs. Yep, Hibs are trying to get him in. Uh, I know that as well. Um, possibly Darren McGregor out to Dundee was one I'd heard. Um, the other one was Jamie Murphy to League Two. Mansfield was the other one I'd heard. So, you know, there's no interest from Hibs in, in, in McGrath. I don't think they're going to get the Charles Regan Cook deal done. So, I think Barker probably would be the one coming in at Hibs and possibly two or three out. Scott Allen's been heavily linked to Kamala and all they're desperate to get him. So, if they can come to some sort of agreement with Scott Allen, I think he'll leave as well. So, Hibs need to, need to get two or three in. But they also need to get two or three out. I was at the game on Saturday and there was seven or eight players, you know, sitting in the stand, Hibs players, right in front of me. You know, so Hibs have now got a big, big squad and they need to get two or three out. So hopefully there's a bit of business done and, and you can get maybe two or three in and two or three out. If they got Charles Regan Cook in that door at Easter Road, Ali, I would be well impressed. I, I'm really impressed every time I see him play. Yeah, me too. I saw him up at Tannadice last midweek and I thought he did a great game. I thought he played particularly well. And then, of course, obviously, he did a decent game on, on Saturday against Strangers, but he's had a very good season. When you look at his goal return for being at Ross County, you think if he's in a more attack-minded team, you've got to think he's just going to add to that. Yeah, he's got a bit of skill about him as well, uh, Tal, which is good. Yeah, I think he scored 10 goals this season, which for a wide man is, is incredible. But I don't see Ross County letting him go in this window. I mean, that would be you know, a disaster for them. You know, he's a top scorer, the talisman, um, unless somebody comes in with... Silly money, but no, Hibs and Aberdeen are not going to come with silly money, but they can get him a pre-contract at the end of the season. Hibs need to bring somebody in to take the pain of Boyle leaving. You know, if they continue to lose games, it's going to build massive pressure on the manager because they, you know how big Boyle was. So they need immediately to get a signing in that not takes over for him, but you know, rises to the, the sort of a standard that the fans want. Yeah, OK. Um, we'll keep you up to date uh, as the programme progresses on any deals that get over the line. And of course, if you want to keep up to date with all the ins and outs and all the breaking stories, especially over uh, the next few hours, all the way to 11 o'clock, then download the PLZ Soccer app and it has all the breaking stories right across the UK, Europe and of course globally as well. And if you miss the show on any day, you can always watch it on the app as well. Simple as that. Download it in Google Play and in the App Store. Uh, we'd love to hear from you as well. You can drop in messages um, that uh, let you give us your opinion on any of the issues in your club or anything that's bugging you in Scottish football. And Rangers have confirmed that uh, Matthias Zakowski has indeed signed for them. So uh, that's a bit of cover from James Tavernier, but it's the big one that everybody's waiting on um, that I think will get um, more than a few Rangers fans excited about the second half of this season. And we're going to talk about Celtic against Rangers coming up very shortly. But let's just go back a wee bit. Um, up at Dingwall, it was Ross County 3, Rangers 3, Ruffy. If anything, Giovanni Van Bronckhurst had this to say about the team's performance in that draw. Uh, we made a good start and got our goal, but we gifted two goals and made it really difficult for ourselves. 
it's always hard to tell why mistakes are made. The reaction we had in the second half was good. We created more chances. We were more dynamic. But in injury time, you cannot give a goal away like this. We were too sloppy. It's very disappointing because we lost two points here. You have to be sharp until the last whistle. You have to be solid. But especially in the first half, we weren't. Um, and I think that sums it all up. Yeah, I think three goals. I think two. I think the three of them were, could have been prevented. Uh, Goalie at fault for two. Yeah, of course he is. You know, but uh, he's a top-class goalkeeper. He's made some wonderful saves uh, this year in, in Europe as well with Rangers. So every goalkeeper loses bad goals. The, the good goalkeepers sort it out in the next game, and I wouldn't be surprised if he does that midweek. Uh, yeah, there, there speaks a there speaks a legend. <laughs> There's a little insight there, Tom. Short term memory loss. You yeah, know, as a goalkeeper, didn't yeah. you? He, well, to be fair, Ruffy bounced back after he ran. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I went holiday. Did you, <laughs> <laughs> to hide. Did you bounce back after Peru? Um, another holiday after that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That, that kind of sums it up for me. Uh, I'm so glad. And for the benefit of our for the benefit of our younger viewers, please look up Alan Ruff in World Cups, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, as far as the game itself was concerned, and again we mentioned Reagan Charles Cook, but uh, Hungbo is another man we've talked about on a regular basis on this uh, programme, uh, albeit there was two blunders by McGregor, but the uh, county have really of late, especially the last couple of months, have really got it together. Yeah, they've solidified a bit. I know they were, they'd have been disappointed to have left Tanadice last last week with nothing after putting so much into that game, but I thought they, I thought they played well in the opening period, in the second half, I thought they were really under the cosh at times. Uh, I thought when Rangers got it back to two each, I did think that there was only one winner you were expecting Rangers to go and, and really kick on. And I did think they put them under significant amounts of pressure. I think there was a chance actually just before it went to three, there was a chance to make it 4-2, which might just have closed the game out. But I think you have to credit. Ross County for the manner in which they kept going to go and get a goal so late in the game but I think Rangers will be kicking themselves because they gifted the points. Yeah, um, what about Ahmed Diallo, Ruffy? I was impressed by him. I thought he had some really good yeah. skill. I think that's a, another good bit of business by Rangers. Yeah, uh, 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 it's the pace. It's the pace that seems to kill the defenders now. If somebody's running at you with that amount of pace, it's difficult you know, to get yourself when you're backtracking. You know, so... You could see it, you know, even at his goal right away, there was only one place he was going to go. He was anticipating the ball coming over, and that's a sign of a good player as well. But no, certainly it's, it's going to be exciting. Uh, seems to be the flanks that you know, everybody's putting their, their hopes on, you know, and Celtic and Rangers. So it could be exciting on Wednesday. Yep, absolutely. It's set up nicely because, um, of course, Rangers up at Ross County was the early kickoff, so by the time it got down to Celtic Park, uh, most of the journalists were in the press room and suddenly, uh, Tam, we just heard this massive roar outside and I thought to myself, wait a minute, has the, has the game kicked off without <laughs> us getting out there? Um, but basically that was them all responding to the equaliser, the late, late equaliser for uh, Ross County. Um, but I have to say, I don't think they anticipated the 90 minutes that were about to unfold at Celtic Park? Yeah, and they left it late. I mean, the boost that Celtic players and the supporters must have got for that last minute Ross County equaliser would have been huge, but Dundee United have caused Celtic problems already this season. I think they drew it, Parkhead, and I thought they were going to do it again, but, you know, that is a huge goal, you know, for the whole momentum of the league campaign. You know, getting to that old firm game, just two points behind with the opportunity to go top if you beat Rangers at home. I don't think Celtic have played particularly well over the last, you know, three or four games, but they're grinding out results. Scored in the 96th minute up at Ross County to win the game. You know, a last minute goal. It's a sign of champions, and they'll be looking to just keep grinding out wins. But it all sets up for a, for a cracker on Wednesday night. You know, if Celtic can win that game, you know, go top for the first time, it'll be a huge psychological blow. But if Rangers win it, you know, it goes back to five points, and you would fancy them strongly. So it's all set up. Yeah, I'm not going to let you away without that line that you've just said there. It's a sign of champions, you said. It is. Y are you changing your mind in your prediction? No, no. I still think that Rangers have got a stronger squad. Um, I still think they've got depth. If they sign Aaron Ramsey, which looks likely today, I still think they've got the edge. But Celtic, to be fair to them, are sticking in. They're keeping winning games. They're grinding out results. They're keeping it close. And as I said, if they can win the game on Wednesday, then it changes a lot. Yeah, well, I, I was at the game uh, watching it. <laughs> kind of a stupid double yellow for Beaton, which means he misses out in the old firm game. But uh, the other thing about it, Ruffy, was Georges Giacomakis yeah. 
Um, I, I, every time I see him, there are some moments where he does a flick at Tyne Castle and I think, OK, nice little bit of skill. But I always think he, he's one of those players that needs to... I don't know if he needs too much time on it or he, he needs to be more instinctive, just off the cuff. Maybe he needs more time, but he missed an absolute sitter at the, at the game that I think many a Celtic fan thought that was the writing on the wall for nil-nil. Yeah, he it, it, it looks like an old-style centre centre forward, you know, he wants to bustle people a bit, but as we've seen now, it's all about pace up front, you know, with Kago. And it's amazing how he's turned in its head, because a month ago we were all talking about Celtic from middle to front are absolutely magnificent, and the defence is still a bit leaky. Yeah. But now the defence isn't leaky, and the midfield's a mess, and up yeah. front's a mess, basically because there's people away and playing games and people injured, McGregor out, you know, and... Uh, they just look mix and match now in midfield and up front, unless he gets a few players back, you know, to get to his best 11, because that was nowhere near Celtic's best 11 at the weekend. Yeah, he, he knows they can go top uh, if they win against Rangers, but Ange Postecoglou, like many a manager before him, says, I'm, I'm not quite sure uh, it's a good place to be in February. It's better to be top at the end of the season. Won't mean anything significant because that's not, you know, that's not the end game, you know, you don't. Get a trophy for being first in February. You know, we our our goal and our mission is to to be there at the end. So it, it's not that it, it's an insignificant um, sort of moment. It's just says to you, okay, we just got to keep going because what we know is, as you saw today, that it's not like when you're in first place, we're going to get an advantage over teams and it's going to be easy for us. Every game is going to be a battle. Every game. Yeah, um, the difference is um, from last season's calamity. Uh, they got the they got the win in the end. They got that goal, uh, and some of the fringe players are stepping up to the plate. I, I wonder though, uh, as we get towards the end of the transfer window, Ali. I think more like Hibernian players will be heading out the door that he's trying to get out on loan, or people that don't have a future. He's maybe try and get them out permanently of Celtic um, th there's a wild speculation that he, he, you know, he, he might do what you don't think they're capable of doing which is announcing Jota as a permanent deal, is that a sufficient uh, shot in the arm because they've done everything else early this time yeah, I think it would be, I think uh, the support have been clamouring for that and for Cameron Carter Vickers on a, a permanent deal, I have to be honest and say if you looked at it from the player's perspective it would make no sense really to commit now at this point in time before the end of the season I think the sensible thing to do would be to wait and assess options come the end of the season there's a, a few things that might come into the mix there if Celtic were to win the league and it opens the door to Champions League football then all of a sudden there's a very significant carrot in front of you but I think the boy himself might feel as though there's unfinished business at Benfica I think there's been a, a change of manager I think there were a few murmurs about why he'd been allowed to go. He may feel as though he's got a, a point to prove to go back and, and push his way into the first team. But he certainly looks, if you if you see the, the footage from Saturday night, he certainly enjoyed the adulation and that element that comes from being a Celtic player and, and lapping up the attention of of, a, of the Celtic support. So again, that might be quite a pull for him, but I have to say I would be surprised if there was a commitment made before the end of the season. I can remember Kieran Tierney getting into his fans as well, he's yeah. loudspeaker. Where did he end up? Yeah. <laughs> so, hey. <laughs> Let's not let's not <laughs> knock players who want to better themselves, Tom. No, no. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean that whole uh, jumping into the crowd thing usually is a sign they're off. Um, but let's not forget there was two teams on the park. Dundee United um, had a game plan. They almost got it down to perfection uh, as the referee and the officials um, held up the uh, the. Uh, uh, what do you call it for the uh, board? Uh, board, yeah. Uh, the, I, forgot, I don't know where I was going there. Yeah. Held up the board to say seven minutes were going to be added on. Wow. And you're looking, you're thinking to yourself, wow. Um, so at the end, Abada scored the goal. Dundee United were disappointed. Tam Courts came into the press conference afterwards, Ruffy. Uh, he thought they deserved at least a point. We didn't sustain enough attacks. We didn't cause Celtic uh, a great deal of problems. I thought we caused them more problems at. at at Parkhead earlier on in the season, so that was a bit of frustration for me. But look, in terms of the endeavour, commitment, and what we put into the game, I think we more than merited a point. But Celtic will probably think with the possession and how often they attacked our goal that they they merited that goal right at the end. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I expected Tam to say that. Thomas to his mum and dad, by the way, when he's Sunday. in trouble. Um, but nevertheless, I, I thought United, a, a lot of the younger players, Tam actually performed 
really well. He's got a he's got a good little batch there as well as of course the addition of of, of Tony Watt. Yeah, listen, I think they're giving youngsters an opportunity up there. I think that was the whole you know reasoning behind getting Tam Coates in. He's a guy who's going to give the youth a chance. Dundee United have invested heavily in the youth, mm-hmm. youth setup. Um, you know, big Andy Goldie up there. So uh, I think that. They played pretty well. I don't. I, I'm not so sure that watching the highlights. I'm not so sure that they deserved a draw. I thought Celtic were the better team and deserved to win the game and, on yeah. chances. But you know, he, he'll be delighted to go there and you know and, and be competitive against Celtic and and be five minutes away for getting a, a point. Goalkeeper, we were for Seagrass Ruffy. Oh, you know, I, I th- thought, this guy is attracting a lot of attention. Yeah, well, I thought Dundee United were competitive, but if it hadn't been for the goalkeeper, it could have been three or four. Yeah. Some of his saves were just absolutely magnificent, and, and to get something out of game. At Parkhead, you've got to have shots on target. Yeah, they had none. Okay, um, okay, uh, Tam, if you're listening, that was Ruffy. <laughs> that was, was Ruffy. Yeah, Thomas, if you are listening, that was Ruffy giving you a, a blunt assessment of your performance over the ninety minutes and and beyond. But uh, I, I agree with you, Ruffy. I don't think they deserved uh, anything um, less than what they got. Um, Celtic really at times were dominant with the possession but it's that final third uh, and of course losing the midfield I wonder what type of midfield they're going to put out against Rangers I have to say Ali the more I look at it the more I think the captain is such a huge miss, miss because he dictates the way Celtic play I wonder if it's it's uh, one of those temptations to put a Gaza mask on him I don't know if it's a possibility I don't know if if the the Medical staff would counter against it. I'm not sure if it's a, if it's plausible. He's the kind of player that I think if there was any opportunity at all, he strikes you as the kind of boy that would want to play. But I'm not sure if it would just go against any kind of medical advice, given the fact that it's a facial injury. I think you have to be very careful with it. I do think he's a massive miss, miss for Celtic. I think he's a incredibly consistent. I also think he's a real cog in the middle of the field that, that links play from, from back to middle to front. I think uh, he also has a very particular kind of leadership, a kind of quiet leadership on the park. Obviously very different to Scott Brown, the, the captain before him, but I think no less influential for it. And I think uh, he was always going to be a significant miss for Celtic following the injury. I think... There is a headache now about how you line up in the middle for Wednesday night's game. I think um, whether or not Adiguchi is fit, he may come back into thinking with Hitati and Matarelli just in front. And, and I do wonder now if Joe Hart will take the armband. Yeah, yeah. well, uh, if I was uh, Ange Postecoglou, I'd maybe just turn around to him and say, look, Callum, we're putting you in an iron mask. You're playing. <laughs> Get in there. I think, if you, I think Mag- Callum McGregor will want to play. I think, don't think there's any doubt about that, but yeah. you know that's a bad injury, it's a sore one, and you need to let it heal for three or four weeks and then put the mask on. I think it's only been what, two weeks since his injury. Well, I don't think days. that's enough time, uh, ten days. Uh, if he gets any sort of, you know, it's, it's a real bad injury, so I think they've got to look after the player and take the medical advice. Yeah, um, OK, there was a lovely touch at the uh, beginning of the game before they all kicked off, and of course... Uh, Celtic Park, uh, remembering Vim Janssen, who sadly passed away, and Callum McGregor and Ange Postecoglou come out onto the park to lay a wreath in memory of Vim Janssen, and they uh, put out a a little commemorative video, and I I know from watching social media that the actual uh, display in the Netherlands uh, for the Feyenoord fans uh, for the funeral cortege was just incredible i mean there were so many flares and and the the funeral cortege going through and what he meant to Feyenoord as a player you know he he was involved at all levels of Feyenoord in in a coaching capacity as well and they held him dear to their hearts so it was a lovely touch to see uh, Ange Postecoglou and Callum McGregor go out and remember Vim Janssen so, um, there's a couple other games to talk about because there was two games off and one of them involved our compatriot in the North East, uh, of course, Andrew Shiny. Uh, Andrew, we never get the chance to talk to you about uh, St Mirren um, because you get battered there as well. <laughs> you get battered there as well after us talking to you about this is the line in the sand, this is the move forward and suddenly it all comes crashing down again and, would you believe it, um, Andrew, uh, Ryan Hedges, as you predicted, out the door. So I'm looking at the clock and I'm thinking, 11 o'clock, are the Dons likely to bring in a few surprise faces? Uh, I'm not sure that it'll be faces. Maybe one face. 
although uh, Stephen Glass at his press conference today was giving absolutely nothing away, he fully expects Calvin Ramsey to still be in his squad for tomorrow night's trip to Dingwall. But uh, I, I, I'm not sure that there'll be any more coming in. As I say, maybe one, possibly on loan. Um, but they obviously brought in Vicente Basai last week, who would have made his debut against St Johnston, but for the weather. So he will start against Ross County. And you've got to hope, as an Aberdeen supporter, that he can have the influence in the team that Ryan Hedges has had. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, are you slightly worried about this whole situation? Because it, it seems to be uh, it suddenly gets into gear and then it stutters again. Then it gets into gear, then it stutters again. And and I, I suppose you, you need Ross County like a hole in the head because... You know, they, they had a really good result against Rangers. They've got some players that can do a bit of damage uh, too. Uh, and I heard just a little whisper. I'm not sure if there's any great, um, you know, foundation to it. But I've heard a little whisper that maybe some of the players haven't been responding to Stephen Glass since he came in. Well, none of them responded to anything on Tuesday night at uh, this Misa Stadium. That was the worst Aberdeen performance I've seen in a long, long time, way back beyond this season. Um, the thing that really disappointed me was that nobody stood up and said, right, I'm going to lead the team here, not even Scott Brown. Um, he was as guilty as everybody else of giving the ball away. There was no pace about the play. There was no determination from players. Uh, there were players there that looked as though they didn't want to be there. Now, whether that's because of transfer speculation or, or not, I don't know. But they've got an awful lot of making up to do tomorrow night. Yes, Ross County and Dingwall will be difficult, but Aberdeen have got a very good record up there. They've won four out of their last five league trips up there, but the last one up there, they got beaten 4-1. I don't see it being like that, but Ross County do score goals, so they'll be dangerous. But on the flip side, they've got the worst defensive record in the league. So if Basai can get his act together and work well with the team, give Ramirez ammunition, he'll stick the ball in the back of the net for you. So it could be an entertaining game, but Aberdeen have simply got to improve in their away form. It is diabolical this season. Two wins in 11, and I think something like four out of the next five games are away from home, including a cup tie at Motherwell, which could be the defining point in this season. Because go out of the cup, and let's face it, the best we're going to manage to get is probably fifth in the table. And that will not give us European football. And that's something that Aberdeen have grown used to over the last eight years. And without it, the season will be defined a failure. Yeah, there's a hey, there's um, uh, you know a, a kind of a damning assessment from Andrew of where Aberdeen are with this. I mean, if they were to lose to Motherwell in the cup, Tam, you know, there's just there's just not a lot to look forward to for Don's fans, especially at a time when I think Dave Cormack wants them, you know, to be galvanised, to be uh, you know committing themselves financially to the club. Yeah, I think obviously this season is is no way the way Aberdeen wanted it, but. You know, the cup competition is massive. You know, I think that Aberdeen will be looking for a big run in the cup, Scottish Cup. I still think that Aberdeen will finish in the top six. Uh, whether that's good enough for the Aberdeen supporters, I don't know, but I think they'll be a better side next season. Um, but this season under Stephen Glass, you know, they've been too inconsistent. Pretty strong at home, poor away from home. So they've got to sort that out, but... You know, I think the Scottish Cup now is really important for Aberdeen, as you said, to give them something to look forward to up there. Yeah. Um, Andrew, so you reckon overall, Andrew, it's a, it's one new face possibly in. The loss of Hedges is a big blow, though, because, you know, he, he had a trick. He had something creative in him. Absolutely. I mean, his consistency was something that people pointed the finger at. Um, he missed a few games because of injury, but he had that spark, that bit of something special about him that could turn a game. And that's where we'll hope that the 20-year-old Dutchman uh, 
Basai can do something similar because that was what was so sadly lacking in that dreadful performance at Paisley last week. There was just no one that wanted to get onto the ball, go and commit opposition players, create a bit of space for um, for their their teammates, and. As a result, it was an easy evening for St Mirren, who didn't have to play well to win the game. Yeah, absolutely. I'll tell you one thing, Ruffy, I don't know if you've noticed, but every angle now that uh, Andrew is giving us in his room there, uh, he's doing what your wife did in lockdown. He's starting to put up different framed pictures <laughs> so that we can try and guess exactly what's in the background. It's, it's looking good. A bit, uh, I'm just looking there. As Don's fans will be wondering, is there too much blue there? What the hell is that to your right hand side, Andrew? What's that frame? That one, that is yes. a, a very limited edition a job by Gordon Reed to celebrate the Washington Whips. That's why there's a lot of blue in it. There's the stars and stripes feature strongly. That's from way back in 1967 um, when Aberdeen went across to the state and were the Washington Whips for the summer tour and ended up missing out on glory, um, losing 6-5 to Wolves in golden time, as they called it in the States, when Ali Shewan, now, Ruffy, you'll remember Ali Shewan uh, from the very early stages of your career. Um, he scored an OG in added time, beyond extra time, and Wolves won that competition. I just had a word with him there, Andrew. Ruffy, Ruffy's lucky he remembers yeah. Tam and Allison in the studio. <laughs> okay, what, 67, 67. <laughs> Ali Shewan, do you remember him? No. No, no, no. I was just coming into the game then. Yeah, okay then. About 25, you know? Yeah, no, no, no. He was, that, he, <laughs> he, uh, was, a, he was a stalwart for Aberdeen. 67, yeah, 67. Yeah, he played absolutely. something like 300 consecutive games as a fullback. And that was in the days when three bookings in a season got your suspension. And he used to lump uh, Jimmy Johnston and Willie Henton all over the place. His fullback partner, Jim White, used to say, you know, Johnston would start in the right wing for Celtic. Within five minutes, he's across in my wing. And Bobby Lennox has been sent across to the, to the other side. <laughs> and we, Jimmy, would say, I'm not having that shoeing up against me any longer. <laughs> Brilliant, Andrew. Uh, Andrew, it's good to uh, chat to you. Hopefully next week we're chatting to you in a, a, in a more positive frame of mind about uh, Aberdeen, although um, it'll be interesting to see how they perform against Ross County. Thanks to Andrew Shiny, always keeping us up to date with what's happening at Pataudry as well. Um, Hearts 2, Motherwell nil. Ruffy. Uh, in the end, Halliday and Sims uh, getting his first goal for the club. Um, oh. Comfortable win. It was comfortable, but I agreed with the Motherwell manager after the game. A couple of chances, if they take one of them, uh, like Dutch boy up front, you know, had a couple of chances, and that one with Craig Gordon when he came out and tried to be fancy. Van Veen. Van Veen, yeah, that could have that could have been nasty as well. See if that had happened. I mean, you you would never commit for another year, honestly. <laughs> it, was just, it was just so unexpected them happening, but no, and I think in the end, overall, I think Hearts are the better side, you know, but uh, you know. Mother will rue the chances because you don't get many chances at Tyne Castle. Yeah, what did you make of um, the heavies? As again, um, Sean Maloney's taking a, a little bit of time to try and get the players out that he doesn't want to see uh, in the team for the future, and and that's probably where the Hibs fans are going to have to suck it up at the moment. Yep, it's going to take time. We've already spoke about that. It's a long-term project at Hibs. You know, he's he's implementing a new style of play. He's come in mid-season. Let's not forget, he's lost his best player. You know, he's lost his top goal scorer and his best player, which is going to be a massive issue for him. You know, hopefully Hibs can get a couple in, but you know, supporters have just got to show show patience. Um, there was in the first half, there was some nice spells of football in terms of Hibs got themselves two one in front. But I've got to give credit to Livingston. I thought Livingston in the second half were superb. Scored two good goals, caused Hibs a problems all day with set pieces. You know, they've got two of the biggest players I've seen in the league: Nubley, the striker, and. Uh, Obelai, the centre half, yeah. you know, two massive players, and both of them were a handful for, for Hibs, and they couldn't cope with the size and the physicality of Livingston. But Livingston played some nice football as well. Well, I was going to say to you, I think sometimes, Alison, you know, I, I, I'm not making an accusation against the broad uh, media because people who see them will know that Livingston plays some good football. Maybe it's just a wee bit lazy when people look at how they construct their goals. I mean, two of them were set pieces again. It was just a launch into the box. 
I think they just play to their strengths. And I think that's common sense. I think they, they use the physicality that they've got within their side. I think uh, Newbury had a, a smashing first half of the season at Arbroath. I think he'd done very well. He'd come straight back into Livingston, picked up where he's left off. I thought, what I think, did he set up two of the goals on, on mm -hmm. Saturday? I just think it, it makes sense for a, a team like Livingston when you have limited resources that you, you play to what you're good at. And I don't think that should be beyond reproach or, or, or up for criticism. Yeah, um, OK. Um, here's how the Premiership table uh, looked after the four games that uh, took place at the weekend. Rangers now down to two. Uh, the difference between themselves and Celtic ahead of Celtic against Rangers. Hearts tucked in behind, quite a bit behind Celtic. Uh, and then Aberdeen there in sixth position, we were talking about to Andrew Shiny. Uh, down at the bottom end, uh, St Johnston didn't play, Dundee there with 17, uh, and then it's Ross County and St Mirren. So there could be some significant changes this week, top and bottom. Uh, what about the predictor table? Well, uh, there was a bit of consternation um, clearly at this moment. I'll give you the scores first and then tell you exactly what's happening here. But Alison has extended her advantage. Uh, Ruffy's tucked in on 204, Alison on 212. I'm in 199, much to the disappointment of uh, Tam McManus, <laughs> who's clearly calling for, uh, you know, uh, some kind of investigation. Uh, and then it's 186 between him and Hugh and Tam Cowan's back on 174. Now, I did, Rofi. And I, I suppose at the end of the day, if you're sauntering about to Hibs TV and then, you know, maybe a bit of coaching with kids and you've got quite a lot of time. I mean, I did give the exact scores on Friday's programme. <laughs> But Tam, who relentlessly pursued our staff to get me absolutely gubbed for my four points, and, I, I, and I'm going to put it to a vote of three of you here. Yeah. If you think I should be denied the four points, having given the scores on Friday, we will yeah. take them off. Well, well as, you know, as, as you know, I have, I have fallen foul of this exact thing. You did. And I remember, yeah. I remember. No, no, there's a slight difference. Did. There's a slight the, difference. Just because he was hung over after his 70th party. You did Post your score, you actually just put one score in. No, I you missed the one... Celtic earlier. I missed the Celtic thing. I vividly remember take all his points off him, <laughs> put him to the bottom of the league. So at one point, our adjudicator did say it was going to go to the vote. So I had my Dundee vote handy. <laughs> you know... <laughs> but no, you, you did say two. Four, four would be fine. If you'd, if, if, if I had come back, if I had come them. back, you'd three each at Ross <laughs> County <laughs> and three two abs. Then I think there'd be a bit of trouble. But no, yeah. four points is fine. Four points is fine, Ali. For God's sake, if you're so far yeah. out in front, yeah, it's not making it's, a difference. Uh, I don't want any tainted title accusations <laughs> coming my way. <laughs> Ali, you sure know how to get them all angry at you. Anyway, there you are. You're in the minority. You're a disgrace, McManus. Some of your texts at the weekend were outrageous. Um, anyway, what about midweek? I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, it's just going to be fantastic. Um, I always enjoy um, an Edinburgh derby as well. Just look at what we've got in store this week uh, in midweek. We've got Dundee against Dundee United, which is great. Have you been to a Dundee derby, Ruffy? No. No, uh, fantastic as well. Scored them one? No. Yeah, have you? Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute. Hibs against Hearts. Scored Living that one? Livingston. <laughs> <laughs> scored that one, yeah. yeah. Uh, Livingston against St. Johnson. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> uh, Ross County against Aberdeen, definitely not. Uh, St Mirren against Motherwell, Tam, I don't think you've scored in that one. And of course, Celtic and Rangers uh, involve really big players, so you would definitely not have scored in that one. Um, so there's the, there's the fixtures. I mean, it's a, it's a rip snorter of a, a week ahead. Uh, and the Edinburgh Derby is just magnificent. I presume you would have been at one, yes. Ali. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's just it. great. I love the atmosphere and it's fantastic. Yeah. It, mo I love it more so if it's at Tyne Castle um, because I just think it's a wee bit more special because I, just the way the whole stadium's constructed, but there's still that great element when, it, when it's at Easter Road as well. Yeah, I think you can feel it. There's always a, a particular frisson in the air. There's just a, a bit of electricity, just that current that comes with, um, mm. with a derby game. I think uh, fans love it. I think as players, it must be fantastic to play in it and I think we've spoken about this before but it was the right thing to bring the break forward so that we are we all have access to these games now because that's what you want. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be fantastic, Rafi. Um, the previous meetings between the two sides uh, to see exactly who's got the edge on this one between, uh, of course, Hearts and Hibs. As you can see there, Tam, um, a nil-nil draw in September, October it was Hearts 2-1, uh, and then Hearts again uh, in March 2020 with a 3-1 win at Easter Road. Go back to December 2019, Hibs managed to get the better of Hearts at Tyne Castle, and then October it was Hearts at Easter Road, and then a share of the spoils in 2019. Give us your assessment of who you think's in a better frame of mind. Is it Hearts that will get into this with a supreme confidence? Yeah, I think they will. I think Hearts will be, for me, will be favourites. I know they're not favourites with the bookies, which surprises me. Um, I think Hearts will be favourites. Settled squad under Robbie Nielsen. You know, third in the league, playing really well. Hibs, as I said, are a team very much in transition at the minute. You know, with style of play, players coming in and out. So I think Hearts will get into it with a lot of confidence and they'll be favourites. But, you know, I was at Hibs for seven years and there was times where we were flying and Hearts were doing the bottom and they would turn in gubbies and it was, you know, vice versa. I think form goes out the window in this game. It's just that on the night, who can turn up and play well on the night? Who can keep their cool? Who can keep 11 men in the pitch? You know, traditionally the Edinburgh derbies have been 100 mile an hour with tackles flying. I don't see that being any different. Yeah, I would just wonder, Ruffy, mm -hmm. about this one. He was talking about the mentality, you know, on the night. Are there, are there leaders, enough leaders in that hip side that could somehow, uh, you know, produce a wee shock? Well, I've said it on numerous occasions, when you come into these big games and you're in the dressing room before the game, you're, you're looking around your own dressing room looking for somebody who's a winner, you know, and, and Hibs have lost their winner in Boyle, you know, he was the inspiration. Obviously, this bit can score goals, he can come up with something a bit special. But as Tam said, the hearts are, are free, free flowing in football, it's good, yeah. good to watch. There's wee boy Devlin, looks good, uh, Barry Mackay tremendous boy, boys will come up with a goal so everything's in their favour but as Tam says these games can turn on their head the same as all Derby games had I'm just happy you never put the fixtures up for 82 86 yeah absolutely yeah. so am I Ruffy <laughs> very, difficult, very difficult for you to even offer any kind of explanation um, Tam have a look at this predicted Hibs 11 it could change dramatically what do you make of uh, this 11, is, it, is that close? Is there anybody you would change out of there? I mean, for me, the most impressive player of Hibs of late has been Cadden. Yeah, Cadden had an excellent first half at the weekend there. I thought he was he had a really good game. I thought Bichit, Big Rocky at the back was excellent. Um, I think Dimitri Mitchell will play. So I think your back three will probably be that back three, midfield four. Yep. And I think you'll play, they'll play Muller, Nisbet and uh, Dimitri Mitchell. Don't think Doyle will start. I thought he, would, he was poor at the weekend. So I think you've probably got 10 or 11 uh, correct there. But I think Doyle for Dimitri Mitchell, who scored and played well on Saturday. Yeah, that'll be uh, interesting to see the reception Ali he gets, uh, you know, when the Hearts fans see him at close range in the green of Hibs. To be fair, I think he'll be expecting it. I think he knows it's coming. It's not going to take him by surprise, not going to be blindsided by it. And I think it's whether or not you, it intimidates you or whether you feed off it. Yeah, absolutely. It's always good when someone can cross the divide, Ruffy, mm -hmm. and, and and still take all the stick that goes with it. Um, with that in mind, Ruffy, you, you, one of your great pals, Ralph Callaghan, um, managed right. to do it. Ra Ralph, to me, wasn't an intimidatory, uh, insightful well, figure at the best of times, just a really good player. Yeah, no, I, I don't ever remember Ralph saying it. We thought about it or worried about it or yeah. anything like that. And he wasn't a kind of the guy that fans were going to turn on, he was he? one of these players that, uh, you know, everybody liked to have a go at, you know, he was just a, a super player. Yeah, um, Darren managed to do it. Darren managed to play really well for Hibs over a five-year period, and then when he went to Hearts, Tam, mm -hmm. because of the, the style of player he was, Darren Jackson just, you know, was actually well-received by Hearts fans. Darren was a great player. He was a brilliant player for Hibs, and he went to Hearts, obviously, later on in his career, but... I don't think he's, he, Dan's got a thick skin, I don't think it bothered him whatsoever. Yeah. I remember him at, at Hearts playing against him when I was at Hibs actually, and terrific player and he, he wouldn't have bothered either way where he went. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, uh, what about the Hearts team? Ruffy, I've, I've had a wee look at it. Um, I like Benningamy, I, I think he is good. Um, I'm, I'm still not... There's still certain areas of the team that uh, worry me, and I, I don't think they've really. I don't know that. I wonder if he's going to be able to make any kind of late signing coming in to help uh, with boys. Mm -hmm. 
No, that is a strong side, you know, and, and I've said on numerous occasions on the show, Barry Mackay for me has been pulling the strings in every game that they've that played in. He's been the main man, uh, and Boyce will always come up with goals, and uh, that's what he is, he's a goal scorer. Again, I've been impressed with the wee boy Devlin, but I think at the back, they look more solid than Hibs, yeah. you know, but I still think we're in for a right good game. I think both both sets of players will have a go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, of course, listen, let's not uh, say that's the definitive, um, because managers make late changes in big games uh, that can alter uh, the outcome. Um, as far as deals are concerned, if you have just joined us, uh, Aaron Ramsey is certainly going to be the biggest deal in the January transfer window and Rangers will have pulled off the biggest shock. It is a transfer coup if he comes from Juventus. As Tam alluded to earlier, there's not a lot of money passing hands between Rangers Football Club and Juventus in this deal. So uh, I think, as Tam mentioned, they are fair play to Rangers for managing to pull off this deal if it's not financially uh, really uh, causing them any great problems. That is a, a great signing if indeed it comes off and we expect it to be confirmed shortly. Matthias Zakowski has come in um, to help for cover it right back with James Tavernier. So Rangers have been busy in the window trying to strengthen and getting ready for the game uh, at Celtic Park. And I, I was looking there, Ali, and no wonder Rangers, the champions, go into this game still with confidence uh, despite the disappointment of, of drawing with Ross County because I'm looking in the last time Celtic defeated Rangers. 2019. Do you remember the game? League Cup final. Yeah. The League Cup final. The League Cup Christopher final. Julian. Christopher goal. Julian. And Ranger, to, be Rangers fair, Rangers yeah. that to be fair, Rangers were the better team. Yeah, I mean, I'm day. looking here and I'm seeing that that's a lot of games. I think it's something like six games since they, uh, in fact, maybe seven, three, six, seven, yeah. I think that does give you an element of, of belief going into the game. I think it does give you a sense of assurance. There's no psychological edge, if anything, you would see now the monkeys on, on Celtic's back. What I would say is I disagree with Tam slightly about the, the old adage about form book going out the window. For me, I think invariably when you look back over the years, the form team tends to be the team who prevails or certainly doesn't come out on the back of a defeat. So I think Celtic go into it maybe in the more... It's maybe the most solid footing over these past two seasons that they've gone into a game against Rangers in. Yeah, and don't forget, if you uh, want to uh, read Alison's column, she's uh, started a new column, she's consistently delivered that column on a Monday, um, and she's, <laughs> <laughs> she's, got a, she's got an opinion as well. Uh, and of course, it's always nice uh, to show your anger at somebody on the programme, and if they put it in print too, which of course <laughs> there's no shortage of people wanting to batter him too. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, you can do that on PLZ Soccer's website, and if you download the app you'll get uh, no shortage of opinion on the show on a regular basis uh, with Tam on Monday Wednesday and Friday Charlie Adam is back with us in case you uh, missed it uh, he was back on Friday uh, much to the delight of most of us on the team in fact all of us Ruffy it was great to see him back it was great unfortunately I had to drop him off from Glasgow which yeah. took me an hour and a half but uh, I'd you do that for a pal, don't you? You don't moan about it. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd bring it up, but then... Absolutely. It's a, it's a good point you make. Um, and not that you've ever done that in 10 years for me. Some man, I'll get you, Charlie. I'll pick uh, you up. I'll there'll be something, something for you in it. Oh, Tickets for something. Can I tell you something? Yeah, no. You're right. There's, there's honestly, always nothing an angle. for nothing, Big Ruffy. Exactly. There's always an angle. There's got to be something. You'll walk in here in a Charlie Adams shirt. Although... <laughs> That'd be a big size. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, to be fair, uh, the way you've been slaughtering him, he says, looks, looks really thin in here, but then when I see him out in the park, he looks chunky. Aye. <laughs> you know, I've had that line from him. Um, what about elsewhere? St Mirren uh, didn't get the chance to play at the weekend, but Jim McGrath, uh, Jamie McGrath is not likely to be leaving St Mirren um, unless there's something dramatic happens up until 11 o'clock. Uh, Jim Goodwin was speaking today uh, about the possible departure of McGrath and um, it doesn't look as if it's going to happen and Tam uh, confirmed that. There was one new face in there, Jordan Jones, a familiar one to Scottish football. Uh, he's back in Scottish football, a loan deal at St Mirren from Wigan and he says he's just desperate to get back out there playing and enjoying himself. He's obviously seen, seen me play in Scotland. Um, he knows what I can do. He believes in what I can do. Um, I think he understands that I haven't had a lot of football in the last six months and it might take me, you know, a few games to get going again. But um, 
you know, he said he's going to give me time. He understands himself. He's been a player that, you know, to, to get plenty of, to your top level, you need to be happy and enjoy your football again. So um, I think that was the main thing. He just wants to help me, you know, get back happy in myself and enjoy my football. And um, I think it'll be it'll be beneficial for everyone involved. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, what about the possibility? Well, first and foremost, good signing. Yeah, for me, it is a good signing. I yeah. think... St Mirren have, have just lacked a bit of creativity on in the final third. I think he might inject it, he might bring it. I think uh, I think he's, he's an experienced sign and he knows the league. I think he can definitely come and make a contribution for them. Yeah, um, all the speculation about who's going in, who's going out at your favourite club. Uh, one of the things ahead of the Edinburgh Derby tomorrow, we heard from Robbie Nielsen today, just updating us on the possibility of John Souter heading to Ibrox in this window. Same as it's been for the last week, to be honest with you. No more offers, nothing. John um, didn't train today, actually, just got a wee ankle knock, but um, should be available for tomorrow night. I just need to go on, mate. You know, we're, we're doing a prep today, you know, we know kind of where we are with it, you know, and then we'll make a decision tomorrow morning. Uh, so, yeah, so just part and parcel. Yeah, look, we're practically looking to see what's out there in the market. I've said all along that, you know, it has to be the right one that comes in, so there's no panic here. We've got some other good defenders here, but first and foremost, I'd like to keep John if we can. Yeah, that's an update from Hearts. What about the possibility of uh, up at Petodri, Calvin Ramsey and Lewis Ferguson? Will they be going out the window? Here's Stephen Glass. It's something that I can answer you right now and it might change, but I, I think so, yes. I think they'll still be here. Uh, it's the frustrating part is that these things are out with our control uh, to the extent that w the club can decide what they accept or don't accept, but we've said it for weeks. If someone comes with ridiculous money really late, one minute to midnight, it probably happens, but... I'm in no different position to a huge number of managers across the, across the country. That's your biggest nightmare, Ruffy. Somebody coming in with a late, lucrative offer that your that your chairman suddenly says he's off ski. Yeah, it must it must be terrible. You know, if you have nothing to back up and there's nothing you can do about it, and you're actually you're told there, there's no debate here. The money's too good to turn down, and the the player wants to go as well. So. Yeah, it, it, it could be. I remember the. Do you remember the deadline days when we used to have people? Working right up until 11, 12 o'clock, waiting it all happening. Ruffy, it's yeah. I, used, how... I used to stay yeah. up at, at times at Radio <coughs> Clyde where you had to earn your corn by breaking stories. Mm -hmm. I used to stay up and at some stages I used to be in the car sitting outside Ibrox or Celtic Park waiting for that last minute signing, Alison. Been there, been there yeah. and done it. Even up to, to recently I was working up to 11, 12 o'clock on transfer windows and... and I think there's a, a difference this season. Celtic done their business fairly early. I think Celtic were always quite notorious for the last gasp players coming in or the expectancy of players coming in or going out. So you were hanging on to see if something was happening and checking things right up to the last minute. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it hasn't happened for quite a while, thankfully, Ruffy. <laughs> Somebody else can do that job now. <laughs> we, we gabs at Radio Clyde can, can oh. sit up till midnight. I don't think he's seen midnight working. Um, but anyway, he'll, he'll, certainly, <laughs> he'll certainly enjoy it. Um, we'll keep you right up to date. Download the PLZ Soccer app and you'll get all the latest breaking news and the transfers in and out right up until uh, 11 o'clock. And there are some deals that could actually go beyond that because of the unique mm. situation of some people who are on a free who can sign at any time but uh, the, the main body of players in and out will happen right up until uh, 11 o'clock. Uh, some other news I want to get your thoughts on. Thanks to so many people uh, for uh, posting their messages on our YouTube live feed. Uh, of course, a lot of Rangers fans very happy that Arn Ramsey could be on his way wearing the blue of Rangers. Will it be a deal that's done tonight, confirmed, and then he's suddenly wearing uh, the blue strip going into the game against Celtic on Wednesday? Only time will tell. Elsewhere, keeping that Celtic connection, I, I'm reading some of the stories Neil Lennon might be interested in, in, in the Sunderland job. Surely not, Tom. Sunderland is what I call not only the poison chalice, but it, it just kills you off completely as a manager. I think he would be interested. I think it's a good job. I think it's a big job. Uh, Neil Lennon, for me, is needing to get back in. You're easily forgotten about in football for me. and yeah. He's been out the game for a while now, so I think he'd, he would take the Sunderland job in a minute. It's just, that's a difficult job, but the person that gets him out of that league will be a hero. And uh, it's, a, it's a, a real carrot for managers to go there and be the guy that gets him out of there. Yeah, um, it's been a real carrot. Mm -hmm. And then, in mm -hmm. the end, 
or at Death Valley for the last five or six managers, Ruffy. Yeah, it just shows it depends what kind of owners you've got and what the ambitions are of the owners and if the owners are decent enough people to keep the manager on board and and, and actually want to achieve to get out of that league that Dan's talking about. So it is a massive club if he was to get it going. There's no doubt the support's there. Everybody that tells you, you know, the, if you get them on a winning side, then the support's there to take you through it. I think if you, uh, at this moment, are, uh, are on uh, Tyneside, you're looking and you're saying to yourself, is this a good time to be a Newcastle United <laughs> fan? Because it's going to be painful for Sunderland fans, I think, over the next few years. Yeah, I think it could be. I think, obviously, there's money to burn, whether or not it's spent wisely. And it's been a fairly an auspicious start, you would have to say, so far. But, uh, yeah, I think it could be very difficult. You're sort of looking over the fence at your your uh, wealthier neighbours and what they have the, the ability to go and do. But I, I agree. I think Neil Lennon would be interested in the Sunderland job. I think it's an opportunity to get back into football. And I think managers like players always have a sense of assurance that they are the ones that are capable of doing what someone hasn't done before. Yeah, OK. Nice little story. Christian Eriksen signed by Brentford. Um, I really do hope he has a, a long... Um, career without any more health scares on this one. I think that's the one thing that's at the back of everybody's mind, Tam. Yeah, listen, I I'm, everybody's delighted to see him back within, in football. You know, it was a real shock uh, when he went down like that. You know, we're fearing for his life and I mean, his career, so obviously he's had a lot of checkups with the medical staff. He's been cleared to get back into football. He's back in at Brentford in the Premier League in England, so listen, if, if he's fit and well, what a sign that is for Brentford. You know, coming from Inter Milan, he go to Brentford, <coughs> you know, so you know, hopefully fingers crossed and get a good run at it now and, and go on his career. Yeah, Everton, Frank Lampard in his manager. Mm. I think he's looking for a, a few deadline day signings as well. Van der Beek set to join up from Manchester United. He'll, he'll be looking to try and get a few more faces in to try and make an immediate impact in a club that, I don't know, Ruffy, it just seems to have, it just hasn't worked out in the last few years no. with the managers that they've had. No, and certainly we've been down there. We went down to speak to Wee Nasey and it's incredible. The setup they've got down there, the training ground and even even the, the, the club shop, the history, yep. uh, the things that they've done and everything. So that's another club, you know, if you were to go in and do particularly well, the fans would love you forever. Uh, but I mean, he's, he's got a lot of hard work to do there. Yeah, absolutely. Tomorrow on the programme, we'll uh, go into greater detail into Celtic against Rangers. Uh, the big match on Wednesday. Hugh McDonald will be with me here in the studio alongside Ruffy uh, to chat all things derbies. Of course, the Dundee derby is one to look forward to as well. Uh, and we'll look at the game at, Tynk at Easter Road, I beg your pardon, Hibs against Hearts. Just one little footnote here, Ali, which kind of a really, uh, I think, should give Tam and Ruffy a bit of confidence, is uh, former Brazil legend Roberto Carlos has agreed to turn out for a pub team in Shropshire. Um, he basically, okay, he, he basically has agreed to this. Uh, it was a dream transfer raffle, which was on eBay, uh, and he's going to turn out uh, for the bull. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and he's going to play. Now, I don't know about you, but he, even a fat Roberto Carlos is going to be fantastic in that side. One free kick, Ruffy, oh. and I'm expecting it to bend sure, right yeah. in. I'm sure the amateur goalkeeper will be panicking, whoever it is. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Can we coax you two out of retirement? It'd be easy for you, but yeah. what about kid gloves over there? I thought, well, I just need to take his hands. Oh, Couldn't yeah. catch it. No. Yeah. Well, he's a good player as well. Can you play a field, can oh, you? Absolutely, the left peg. He was a. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. He's one of those uh, players that could actually play outside. I know Alice. Play out from the back. Yeah, well, there you are. There's a line. Um, and on that note. <laughs> Oh, we can so, play for the back, all right. Oh, well done, well done, Ruffy. <laughs> Ali could play, actually. He's not bad with his left peg, but even that's gone now, Ruffy. It's just tennis for you, isn't it? Tennis only. That's it. Tennis and. A bit of bowls. Bowls starts bowls. in April. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Try and remind us right about April, will you? Um, okay, if you want to read Alison's column, it's in uh, the. Uh, uh, on the website, and you can get a look at uh, the old firm game. What do you think is going to happen? Will Celtic win it? Will Rangers win it? Will there be a stalemate? Is it going to be a draw? Uh, there's a few other tasty derbies to look forward to. Uh, will Tam McManus have a smile on his face in midweek, or will he be actually taking pelters off? Do you know any jambos? Yes, I know a few, I. Yeah, OK, there's a potential for him getting absolute <laughs> pelters. Um, Ruffy, there's nothing worse than losing a big derby. Put you on a downer. Oh, I, I, I would go the opposite way. I would, I would love to know what it's like to win one. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you. Yeah. Not how long were you at Hibs for? Uh, six years. Six, you never won a derby? Games. Six, six, even even I won a couple. 16 down. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, tragic stuff, actually. And I think I just, I think I joined <laughs> Radio Fourth as a reporter, Ali, just after he had left. And even then, all the way through the 90s, Hearts were the dominant team. They were absolutely incredible uh, with Wee Robbo and mm. Gary Mackay and all that uh, team as well. So, listen, on that note, give us your view on that. Tomorrow we've got a competition. It's a chance. Uh, I think Ali, uh, Ruffy, uh, Tam, Hugh McDonald and Charlie Adam uh, and Tam Cowan almost certainly we'll see if we can get coax everybody out to Thursday at uh, the shop in King Street in Glasgow we're having a wee night and you and your pal could be coming along to join us if you are in uh, close proximity to Glasgow and King Street we've teamed up with Social Recluse which is a great retro shop it's got f some fantastic t-shirts and prints uh, to do with music and football uh, and it's well worthy of us going there having a bit of a chat Ruffy we're going to share a few stories yep. have a laugh and maybe a wee share of it here and there yeah I'm sure we've all been to uh, outdoor broadcasts and they're, they're very good they're exciting yeah they're good oh, great chat. it's great uh, meeting the people that you can see well, all the nice people be coming. <laughs> Ruffy. The people who are the nice I, oh, I don't want anybody there. There's a somebody at the door. Yeah. There's a somebody at the door. Well, there's there's the, like, the tell of a lot of fans. There's, a specially, invited, there's a specially invited audience. So, so you, and get, do you get a lot of flack in real life, Ali? In real life? Yeah. No, nobody knows. Nobody knows me in real life. But yeah. I just well, on they do the, now, by on, the way. <laughs> just my social media sometimes invites a... Bit of heat. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> After your show. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, that's what I was just about to say to you. So come along and see Ali and uh, Tam at his best. Tam Cowan will be in blistering for him. Uh, we will uh, give you the details of the competition tomorrow. Download the PLZ Soccer app, you'll get all the latest breaking stories. And if you hit the subscribe button, you can join the football family on PLZ Soccer. From Ali, Ruffy, Tam, and myself, Peter Martin. Thanks for watching. <laughs>